Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Justin Pierce. I am with Federal Employee Benefit Advisors, and it's my pleasure to bring to you the first installment or the first session of our Federal Lunch and Learn series. We're going to be joined by my colleague and friend, James Campbell, momentarily. Looking forward to delivering some really good information for you on forms and prep for retirement. That's what this 30-minute session will be about. And I see uh, a few hundred people have joined already. We've got over a thousand people registered. So we're going to give everybody about one to two more minutes so that they can pile in here and get this good information. James is going to be answering the uh, Q&A box. So if you have questions throughout, he'll do his best to get to those questions. At the end of the 30 minutes, we will also have a Q&A session, about 10 minutes of answering questions live. And we're looking forward to helping you better understand the retirement process, the forms needed, and we'll be starting in just a few seconds. Again, I'm Justin Pierce. Welcome, everybody. I see everybody joining us. Thank you so much. This is session one of our Federal Lunch and Learn series, our six-part series, beginning with forms and prep for retirement. Just a reminder, this will be recorded, so we'll be able to send you the link to the recording in case you aren't able to catch the entire uh, session. Also be able to share that with all of your colleagues and friends who you think might be in the retirement process, be thinking about retirement. Usually about five years away from retirement is when you want to start thinking about all of the steps and forms and, and process involved, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my friend and colleague, James, and he's going to uh, tell you a little bit about himself in, in, in just a few minutes, but I'm going to begin by telling you a little bit about who I am, who we are, and what we do, okay? So this is my family, uh, my beautiful wife, Rachel, and my children, Alyssa, Zachary, Madeline, and Lily. I love them dearly, and this is uh, one of the reasons why I do this, of course, is to provide for them, and and uh, I, I have motivation every day uh, to get up because of them. And I am a financial fiduciary, as is James. A fiduciary is important to understand because this is like a financial planner, but held to a much higher ethical and legal standard than most other financial professionals. In fact, the SEC requires that I put your needs ahead of my own and maintain no conflict of interest. And one of the ways that we maintain no conflict of interest is by remaining completely independent. Okay, so most financial advisors out there are, are captively employed. They are hired by a financial firm such as Edward Jones or Merrill Lynch or Fidelity. Those folks do a great job, don't get me wrong, but they're working for that company. So they're very limited with what they can offer you. Oftentimes you don't even hear about all of the investment options that are available to you because they have to stay within the guidelines of what the company says they need to recommend. Whereas what we do is we work with the top 50 financial institutions as a whole. And so whenever we deliver a, a financial recommendation or a solution, we're working with the top three companies at that time. And there is no fee for our service to do a consultation. There is no cost for this. We are compensated by the financial institutions, not by you. So that's a win-win for everybody. Uh, James and I are also chartered federal employee consultants and federal retirement consultants. So these are certified designations through FINRA, the Financial Regulatory Authority, which indicate that we are subject matter experts in all things federal benefits and federal retirement. So we are industry experts in this field. And I've been doing this for uh, about 14 years. Now I need to change that slide since 2008. It's about 15 years now, exclusively serving federal employees and your benefits. So James and I are like financial planners who work only with federal employees and their spouses. So we are very laser targeted in with your benefits and your retirement. And one of the ways that we help folks understand their benefits better is exactly what we're doing today, a webinar, a lunch and learn. Uh, we also do seminars. We do workshops for unions and agencies. Uh, we do one-on-one -on -one consultations. So we deliver a lot of good information through a lot of variety of methods. And then we, I've also co-authored the book, The Informed Fed. Uh, uh, James also has, has co-authored that as well. Together, this is a, uh, we, we, we helped um, write this book, The Informed Fed. It's about 155 pages of really good information. And uh, we'll explain a little bit later how you can get a copy of that. Now, we are also not federal employees. That's very important to understand. So we are not employed by or hired by an agency. Uh, in fact, OPM will never hire or um, uh, employ a financial professional to do what we do. 
We're allowed to do what we do, but we are not hired by the government to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to James now. He's going to tell you a little bit about who he is, and then we're going to get right into the information. Thanks, Justin. Hi, everybody. So glad to be here. Glad you all are taking a little bit of time out of your day to get a little bit more educated about the retirement process. So uh, like Justin said, I, I carry all the same designations and stuff as him. So this will be a lot quicker on my end. Uh, of course, I'm a husband and father. This is my family here. My wife, Betsy, my three kids, Bianca, Cole, and Chase. Um, I'm a fiduciary. I'm a chartered federal employee benefits consultant. I'm a federal retirement consultant. And I also work exclusively with federal employees. So this is our world. This is what we do. Uh, it's a deep rabbit hole. There's a lot of information. And, and every every day I come to work, I tend to learn something new. There's just a lot to know uh, in this space. Like you said, I helped him with that uh, uh, informed fed uh, book. I'm also not a federal employee. And um, I'm going to be primarily, like Justin said in the beginning, I'm primarily on today's session going to be on the Q&A. So as you type in those uh, questions, I'll do my best to get to all of them. There are a lot of people on here today, so I know I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. But that's why we're going to we're going to show a few times and drop a few links where you can you can schedule a free one on one consultation with us that we can go into into more depth and really get uh, your more advanced questions answered and stuff like that. And the ones that we can't get to. So Justin, and I have a team of uh, federal retirement consultants uh, that work with us. So these are you know pictures of some of the folks that you can work with and the list of the names of the folks that uh, assist us uh, on the back end support and stuff. Uh, we got a great team and, and a lot of knowledge. So please feel confident in scheduling an appointment with one of us so we can uh, help you better understand your situation, your retirement. Disclosures, we're not going to be talking specifically about investments today, but it's always important to know that what we're talking about is not supposed to be taken as personal financial advice. We're going to be talking about the retirement process, but we're going to be talking about it in a general nature. We're going to answer some specific questions, but we're not giving, we're not, we're not offering uh, personal financial advice. We'd have to learn more about you and your actual situation to, to make actual recommendations. Like Justin had mentioned, you're going to have a chance to get a free copy of the informed Fed that he and I helped with. Uh, and that's just by simply um, scheduling a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us or one of our team members, one of our federal retirement consultants. And when we do these one-on-one -on -one consultations, they're really beneficial. They're far more beneficial than sitting through a webinar or a training because we're going to spend a whole hour talking about you and your situation. We're going to project your retirement incomes. We're going to talk about all the benefits that are tied to that. What are your retirement options on those benefits and give you a much clearer idea uh, of what your retirement income and benefits would look like. So you can start using that to plan. And there's actually an appointment request form in the uh, chat right now, folks. So go ahead and click that, type in some of your particulars, and we'd be happy to have uh, myself or James or one of our um, uh, certified uh, federal retirement consultants contact you to answer your questions and give you all the benefits that we uh, offer here. No charge during your consultation. So let's go ahead and uh, kick things off. We've got two objectives today to cover the main forms required for your retirement. We get a lot of questions on this. So we decided to do a, a whole 30 minute national webinar on this. And you're going to get some really good information about not only the forms required, but how to properly prepare for retirement. There is a strategy. There is a best case scenario, if you will, to when to do this, when to do that, so that you can avoid some of the pitfalls, some of the delays that a lot of other people before you have had to go through. Oops, before we uh, get started though, I want you to know that our next federal lunch and learn session is on April 27th at 1230 Eastern. We're gonna put that link in the chat box right now. You can register for that session and you are not gonna wanna miss this. We're bringing on a, an esteemed estate planning attorney to do a, a live sort of uh, round table Q and A with us. And she's gonna be answering questions about living trusts, living wills, probate, things of that nature, things that you want to start thinking about. If you don't have a living trust or a irrevocable trust, or if you don't have at least a living will, you, you want to put that on the front burner of your mind. And we're going to discuss all of the reasons why, some of the best ways to do that, and then answer your questions live. And then as you can see, we've got some other um, sessions there uh, that you'll be getting invited to as well for joining this webinar today. We also have a one hour long webinar where we're gonna cover the six main federal benefits. That's gonna be next week, actually, uh, April 13th. And we're also gonna stick around for about 30 minutes to an hour afterwards doing an in-depth Q&A. 
James and I take questions rapid fire. We're going to do a little bit of that today for about five to 10 minutes. But next week, we're going to stick around a lot longer and answer a lot of your questions. This will cover a lot of the, the benefits and strategies. We'll do a live pension consultation. We'll project someone's pension instantly. We'll look at a TSP income scenario. We're going to have a lot of fun. There might be some, some, uh, some giveaways there, too. Uh, so, so be sure you register for that. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Now, we're going to discuss the forms needed for retirement. But before this, when you're about a year away, when you're about 12 months from retirement, you want to you want to know when that retirement date is, okay? Because what I'm about to teach you over the next 15, 20 minutes starts with when you know your service separation date, all right? So when you're about five years out, three years out, you want to start thinking, okay, when am I going to retire? And then when you get to a year out, you really want to nail that down. OK, because at the six month mark from that service separation date, you want to officially start the process. You want to get everything in gear so that you can get the documents turned in, make sure that they're reviewed, make sure that there's no errors so that you can retire on time. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get the estimated annuity statement, as it says here. And this can be done by going to grb.gov or you can go uh, to HR Shared Services. You can contact your HR um, contact person, they can get you this. GRB.gov, it's instantly. If you go through HR, it takes about seven to 10 days. This document is going to have all of the particulars that you need and want that are going to go on the next forms that we're going to discuss. Okay. This is a little glimpse of what that estimated annuity statement looks like. Obviously, it has no one's information in there. Your uh, information will populate. And we'll take what's in this document and we will put it onto another form, uh, the, the retirement form. But before that, after you get the estimated annuity statement, you want to get the SF-50. This is the Notice of Personnel Action. All right, this is going to encompass your entire career. What grade you started on, all the different step increases that you had, your pay increases, your locality adjustments, everything. You want to make sure that that looks accurate because if it's not, it might alter the actual service retirement date, which is a little bit different than the service computation date. And you'll know what I mean as we continue along here, okay? So there's a there's a computation date of when you were hired, and then there's a service retirement date based off of any military buyback, any sick leave, things of that nature, okay? So this is what the SF-50 kind of looks like. And this, again, is something that you can get on the grb.gov. This is something you can get from HR. If you end up becoming a client of James or I or any of one of our federal retirement consultants, we will get you these documents uh, so you don't even have to worry about it. We'll actually help you fill these out. And in some cases, we'll fill them out for you and make sure that, uh, you know, everything is on the up and up and the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Okay, so the next form uh, that we're going to talk about is, is after we um, briefly mentioned again, the opportunity you have to discuss your retirement in more detail with us. So, again, if you schedule an appointment with us, you're going to get a free copy of our book. Now, let's go ahead and move on to that uh, next form, which is the first retirement application, also known as the standard form or SF-3107, the 3107. This form is for FERS employees only, of course, and it's about 20 pages long. This is where you're going to be making those big decisions about your retirement. You're going to be making decisions on several key benefits, and we'll talk about those benefits next Thursday on our webinar of what you'll be uh, deciding on on the first retirement application, but you'll also be making permanent decisions here. So this form is 20 pages long. You're going to pull a lot of the data from the estimated annuity statement onto this form. So make sure, that, again, about the six-month mark, you acquire this form and you start turning this form in. All right? I'll, I'll explain when you want to turn that form in uh, in just a couple of seconds. So if you are a CSRS employee, which some of you may be, you want the SF-2801. That's the CSRS retirement application. This is kind of what this looks like. Again, same location, the grb.gov, HR, or we can get you these documents if you end up becoming a client of ours. All right, this one's a, li a little bit uh, longer, but still about 20 to 25 pages. Okay, now the other form you're going to want, whether you're a uh, SERS employee or a FERS employee, is the FEGLI retirement form. So the SF-2818, okay? So Begley will be covered more detail next Thursday on our webinar, but in short, you've got four different types of coverage. This is where you'll be deciding how you want to take each one of those four into retirement. So uh, here's a glimpse of it right here, all right? 
So the SF2818, the SF3107, or the SF2801 are going to be turned into HR three months prior to retirement. That's sort of the, the perfect time because it gives them time to get everything ready to go. If there's any errors or glitches or, or incompletions, it gives them time to kick it back to you so that you can return it, complete it correctly, and not have to delay your retirement. And James, in a, in a little bit, is going to talk about what happens after you actually retire, okay? All right, so, James, um, why don't you go ahead and review these forms for them and then walk them through what to expect once they retire. All right, perfect. Yep. <clears throat> Just like Justin said, six months out, you're going to want to request that estimated annuity statement. Make sure everything's correct, because if you need to correct it, as we all know, nothing happens quickly in the government. So you want to make sure you give yourself time to make sure all that's corrected and get that SF-50, make sure everything looks good on there. Um, that retirement packet, you're going to want to turn in 90 days before. That's the soonest they're going to let you turn that in. And you want to turn it in as soon as possible, as soon as they'll let you, because there are some significant delays. Um, once you turn that in, then it's going to go to your agency. Your agency has to complete their portion of the packet, and you have no control over how quickly they do that. And then once they complete that, then it finally goes off to OPM to start being processed. OPM currently has around a 90 to 100 day backlog. So as you can tell, this all takes some time. So we, that's why you want to be turning it in as soon as they'll let you. Um, that Fegley retirement, it's so strange that it's just not included in those packets. Why it's a separate form, I don't know. But it is important to know that you want to turn that in. One of the biggest things that's going to cause you delays in your retirement processing is incorrect or incomplete paperwork. This happens all the time, and this is what really slows down the process. Um, and that's what we do as client, as advisors of, for you folks. Once you get all these forms filled out, you don't turn them into HR, you turn them into us. They go for, through our review process, and then before you have any delays, we let you know what needs to be changed or change those for you. Right. Okay, so then once it's all turned in and, and you actually retire, uh, then you're going to start to get, and it depends on which system you're under. If you're a FERS employee, you want to retire at the end of a month, like the last day or two of a month. If you're a CSRS employee, you want to retire in the first three days of a month. Why it's different, I don't know, but that's just how they calculate them. Um, so as a FERS employee, they're going to start to calculate your annuity payment the first day of the following month of when you retire. So that's why you want to retire at the end. So they start calculating it the very next day or a day or two later so that you're going to get your first estimated annuity payment 30 days after that, the beginning of the following month. A CSRS employee, if you retire in the first three days of the month, they're going to start calculating your annuity for the following month then. So you retire on the first, second, or third, then just less than 30 days, you'll get your first estimated annuity payment. So it's important to know that when you retire, you're going to be getting an estimated annuity payment for somewhere, you know, three to nine months, just depends on how long it takes them to process your paperwork, if there was uh, errors in the paperwork and stuff like that. So what they're going to do is they're going to pay you around 70% of your actual uh, retirement payment. Um, what they're doing is they're holding back for taxes and uh, benefits. That all hasn't been calculated and finalized yet, so that's why they're giving you an estimate amount. And when everything gets finalized, if they owe you more money back, they'll give it to you. But it's important to understand that, that first three to nine months of retirement, you're going to be getting an estimated payment. You want to have a little bit of cash reserves built up. One of the things that helps with that cash reserves is if you can if you can log up some uh, annual leave leading up to your retirement, because that's going to get paid out in a lump sum on your last check. Uh, and beyond that, if that's not going to be enough, you're probably going to want to have a nice little savings account, something to help. Uh, buffer that that phase, that estimated annuity phase before you start getting your full actual um, retirement annuity check. Good. Yeah, very good information. All right. And so uh, just another reminder, um, if you would like to go through this one-on-one -on -one, on -one with us, we would love to chat with you, one of our team or Justin or myself. We're going to run through everything. We're going to help you with a retirement estimate. We're going to look at what benefits you have. We're going to talk about your retirement options on those and figure out what your potential deductions are. Um, so we'd love to chat with you. That link is up in the uh, in the chat. All right. And then we are going to get a link for a short survey. We always appreciate your feedback. Our goal is to continue to make these better and better for you all the federal employees. So we want to hear how we're doing, what we could do better and all that stuff. 
Uh, if you fill out the short survey, we're going to get you uh, the free gift of the ten, top 10 mistakes made by federal employees. A great little publication that'll uh, help you avoid those common mistakes. All right, and then upcoming educational events. Our next session is on April 27th. Um, that's going to be a lunch and learn um, for um, what topic are we covering on that one? Estate planning 101. Estate planning. That's right. Estate planning 101. That's right. It's highlighted in red. Sorry, I couldn't read our own slide. Um, and we're actually going to have an attorney on there uh, that's going to help answer some questions about estate planning, why it's so important and why it's something yeah. if you haven't thought about it, you might want to start thinking about that. And estate planning is not for the for the rich folks. Uh, estate planning should be done for everyone because what's going to happen if if you've gone through the probate process, you know what I'm talking about right now. If you haven't gone through the probate process, you want to avoid the probate process. And the probate process is a legal process where if you don't have a trust, if you don't have uh, even if you have a will, you have to go through the probate process. It is time consuming. It's lengthy. Uh, it involves attorneys. It involves emotions. And if you have a trust. It avoids that entire process. Okay, so there's a lot more benefits to that, but it's definitely good information for you. That that's in a, in a couple of weeks on the 27th. I'm gonna also put in the um, April 13th one hour webinar link right now. I, I I didn't include that slide, but I'm gonna put that that link in there. So next Thursday at one o'clock Eastern, we're gonna do a full length uh, six main federal benefit. Um, webinar on uh, or six, six main federal benefit um, educational webinar on uh, how to maximize your retirement. And then we'll do about a 30 minutes to an hour long Q&A following that. So that brings us to the Q&A. We've got about eight minutes left. This is exactly kind of where we wanted to be. We didn't want to keep you guys beyond the 30 minutes. We know how important your time is, what you're doing out there for all of our uh, federal agencies. So thanks again for that. So James, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, pick a, Q, a question in there, folks. This is the time to fire your questions away. It doesn't just have to be about forms for retirement. It can be about anything regarding retirement and benefits, but we're going to answer some live right now. Yep. All right. So I'm going to grab one here. Um, Melissa asks, is sick leave paid out as a lump sum? No, your annual leave is going to get paid out as a lump sum. Your sick leave is going to get converted into service time, which adds to your annuity, your pension annuity payment. Uh, there's an important thing to understand about that, that it's only in 30 day blocks. So as an example, if you have three months and 27 days of sick leave, when you retire, you'll get three months added to your service time and the 27 days evaporate. So there is definitely some planning, some strategic planning as you start to get within a, a year or two of retirement on trying to get yourself as close to that full 30 days as possible so that you're not losing many of those uh, sick leave hours. Kathy asks, is the SF-50 notice of personnel action the same as the certified summary of service? No, the certified summary of service is included in the SF-3107. She says, I did receive one of those when I requested my last official estimate through GBR. So a certified summary of federal service That'll be something that you'll receive within that SF-3107 form. And then once you turn that in, they'll return that back to you, giving you exactly what it says, a certified summary of federal service. The SF-50 is more about wages, uh, grades, step increases, um, service computation date, things like that. Yep, and kind of along that same thread, uh, Stephen asked, do we need to get the most recent SF-50 only? There are more than 80 in my file. Uh, so that's correct, Stephen. You have a bunch of these. Uh, you want to get your most recent one for sure. But then in that uh, um, summary of service, that 3107-1, I think it is, part of the retirement packet, that's going to have the whole list of everything compiled. Um, you're also going to find a lot of the important information that we're looking for when you get that uh, estimated annuity statement. That's going to have a lot of your great information there on your um, service computation date for retirement. And the, that brings me to another great side topic. A lot of people don't realize you have two different service computation dates. A large majority of people don't, they're not different, but they can be. The one that calculates your leave and the one that calculates your retirement can be different if you had intermittent service, part-time service, a break-in service or something like that. Those dates are not going to be the same. So if you ever had any of those situations where you took a break from work or were working part-time, 
you really want to make sure you understand your service computation date for retirement when you're planning for this, because what shows on your pay stub, that leave and earnings statement, that's showing your SCD leave date. So that can that can be lead you down a, a, an incorrect path if you just uh, go off of that date. All right, Jody asks, my Fegley premiums keep increasing. What are some life insurance companies that have better rates? That's a great question. For everybody who has Fegley, at least option B, your Fegley costs are increasing. So um, that's something we can help you with personally, Jody. If anybody else has questions about Fegley, you can schedule a consultation with us. We represent the top 50 financial institutions, including life insurance companies. So we can get you some really good options and rates, which will put you in a much better situation than what Fegley has for you. All right. And I, I've seen this one a few times. Uh, is there a cost involved for a consultation with FIBA? No, we do initial one hour benefit consultation retirement estimate at no charge. Good question. Um, let's see. Um, sorry, I don't have one ready yet. I've Talk got one ready. Another one. Does okay. high three yeah, only apply for the last three years? No, it, it applies to the highest consecutive 36 months of your adjusted basic pay. So I'm going to break that down. This is important because you don't have to work a full year. If you get a pay raise and plan on working uh, halfway through that next year, it's not that you're not getting any benefit from that higher pay for six months. So they're going to look at your highest consecutive 36 months and adjusted basic pay is your salary, your base salary with your locality adjustment. So you are getting benefit of, benefit of it. one of those higher cost markets uh, that is increasing your um, your high three, which will increase your payment for life. I've definitely talked to a lot of people that know this and have flexibility, and they've intentionally moved to a higher cost market for the end of their career to get that higher locality adjustment, increases their high three average. And then when they retire, they're going to move to a lower cost market. So there is some strategy there. Roshonda asks, do you provide suggestions on the different funds with the TSP during the personal one-on-one -on -one session? Absolutely. Uh, we are all uh, financial uh, advisors and licensed to do so. And that's one of the things that we uh, specialize in. So that is one of our um, key features, one of our key uh, benefits that we will talk about is TSP, ways to maximize it, because there are some great ways to maximize it for sure. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so if you you got one, James? No, go for it. Okay. Uh, uh, a good question that um, Sherry asks, is FIBA a private investment service or what exactly is your role if we become a client of yours? So we are a um, independent financial services and educational resources organization. So when you meet with us, our main goal is to deliver high level information and education. And that's what we've been doing. Uh, for the past 15 years. In that, if we identify an individual federal benefit where there might be a better option in the private sector, and, and there are, and some of the federal benefits are fantastic. Some of the benefits are built off of private sector solutions already. But if we identify a situation where we can put you into a much better situation, then when we make that recommendation, we act in the capacity of licensed financial professionals. Okay, So we are not with the federal government, we are not uh, with an agency. We are acting independently of the government to deliver education and also recommend maximized financial strategies. All right. I got a question of how far out uh, from retirement should we schedule with you all? And I would say uh, the sooner the better. Um, for sure, once you're getting within five years is a great time to start to talk with one of us five years out from retirement. Um, if or definitely once you get 59 and a half and older, for sure, even if you think you're going to work maybe till 70, um, there's just starts to become some strategies and stuff that we can start to help you with to maximize your retirement. So as soon as possible, for sure, within five years uh, or uh, 59 and a half and older. OK, so, uh, Cecily, uh, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, but if not, my apologies, says, can you collect full retirement at 30 years service? If under the age requirement, and the answer is no, you, you have to have 30 years of service and reach the minimum re, uh, requirement age. Okay, so that, that's a good question. So stick it out until between 55 and 57. That's when that range is. All right, I got a question. What is estimated annuity statement? Please advise. So this is something that you're going to, 
to me, the easiest way, instead of <clears throat> the GRB is kind of like a self-checkout lane, I would rather, you know, them do their job and get, get it for you. So you'd contact your HR agency and say, hey, I would like an estimated annuity statement for this date, as if you were going to retire that date. This doesn't put you on any kind of a bad list or they're going to start looking at you funny. It's you're starting to want to plan for retirement. And so what they're going to do is look at your years of service, project a high three and give you the annuity statement that's going to have all that important information. What was your retirement SCD date? What type of uh, estimated annuity would you get if you retired on that date and so forth? So this is going to a good planning tool. We can create basically the same thing, which is one of the things we do on our on our one-on-one -on -one consultations, we know all the calculations. We're going to get you your estimated retirement stuff, but uh, there's just a lot of other documentation that comes on that uh, estimated annuity statement that you want to confirm to make sure that the government has the correct records on you. We got a couple questions about charge and cost uh, for consultation, becoming a client. So Aaron and and Diana um, essentially are asking, well, Aaron's asking, should I have any numbers gathered together prior to our consultation? Our assistants will tell you exactly what to have ready. We're going to do an interactive pension uh, estimate and TSP income calculator together. Okay, In order to do that well, you want a leave and earning statement and TSP statement if you have them. Okay, So at, at the minimum. Um, and then uh, Diana says, what do you charge if we use your service after the consultation? So like we were saying earlier, if we recommend something to you, the financial institution that we're working with, they are going to have, have the, the cost. And we will explain that cost to you. We don't charge anything over and above that cost. The only thing that we charge a fee for is a, a living trust and will. Okay. Beyond that, financial uh, recommendations, um, financial solutions, we don't charge anything for. The financial institutions might have a small fee, but that is uh, between you and them. You don't pay us. It's and, and the fee that they might charge is very minimal. It's it's very low fee. Yeah, and um, I had a really good point to to piggy tail on that, Justin. Oh, we're going to disclose any fees. So if, if we're talking about a strategy or solution for you, that's going to be part of the conversation. Here's the company, here's their fees. So it's all disclosed up front. There's not going to be any hidden charges or anything like that. You're going to know exactly in your decision-making process, you're going to know exactly uh, all inclusively what's entailed with that recommendation. Don says, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You, did you have more? Okay. Don says, how old do you need to be to pull money from thrift savings without a penalty? This is a great question, Don. So this goes for everybody. If you have separated service, you can do a transfer to an IRA without penalty if you're under the age of 59 and a half. If you're over the age of 59 and a half and still employed with the government, you can do an in-service transfer to an IRA without penalty, no taxes. So it's a completely cost-free transaction, and it is something you definitely want to consider because TSP is a savings plan, thrift savings plan. It is designed for when you're younger. You have three choices, really. You've got stocks, bonds, and a G fund. That's it. So it's good when you're younger. When you get into the retirement horizon, which is 59 and a half and up, you really want to consider a true retirement plan, an individual retirement annuity, IRA. And that's something that we can talk to you about more specifically. And that's what we do for the majority of our clients. Good question. Yeah, good question. Um, I had a question about if we will help advise if you're already getting, I'm looking for the name again, um, just so I can <clears throat> let you know who I'm answering, but I can't find it right now. I'm going through all these questions. The question was, uh, will we help advise if you're already receiving like a military pension and military benefits? Uh, and I'm assuming you're asking about uh, how it's going to work with if you've now have, are going to be doing a, like a FERS or a CSRS retirement on top of that military. Yes, we can we can advise and talk about that and help you look at the numbers on, is it better to combine those two pensions? Is it better, better to leave the military pension as it is and then get a secondary uh, pension through FERS or CSRS? So the answer is yes, we can help you look at the integration and, and the correlation between those two. Bradley asks, I had a break in service. Where can I find my new retirement date? On the estimated annuity statement, that'll show that. Also on the SF50, there's a couple different spots. Yep. <clears throat> and then Cynthia asks, aren't trusts expensive? And Suleen asks, how much do you charge for a will? We're going to cover that in more detail um, on the uh, 27th with Leighton, our uh, estate planning attorney. But 
trust can be expensive. They really can be. Sometimes, you know, four, five, six thousand dollars. We don't charge that though. We're we're just making sure that you need the basics of what you need to make sure that you can avoid the, the probate process. Uh, a living a trust in, or our, our state planning package includes a living trust or or revocable or an irrevocable trust. We'll talk more about that next session, but it includes a trust, a will, medical, financial, and durable power of attorney, all five legal documents that would normally cost between three and six thousand dollars. We charge for only fifteen hundred dollars. So I have a question here about um, long-term care insurance. Um, oops, the, as new questions pop in, it it uh, moves them. Um, so long-term care insurance is a very interesting topic right now. It's an industry that's in a major overhaul and a change. You may or may not know this, but currently uh, the government has suspended the federal long-term care program. Uh, the people that were already in there are grandfather, but they've been getting price increases. So the traditional long-term care policies that we all kind of got used to seeing are hard to find now. What we're finding now is a lot of combination products with life insurance that have some long-term care benefits or riders to them. So it is it is something we can talk about. It is a, kind of a moving target right now. It's something important to look at. But uh, it's going to depend on on your situation and what you got going on and what's available on the market when when you're signing up for it. So uh, very good question that a very important topic, uh, but no specific common recommendations. Wes asks a good question. Uh, he says, how does retirement work if you started working for the government late in life, which is, uh, you know, for 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 a segment of folks, that's the case. Uh, he asks, if you will never get to 30 years, when can you retire or how does that work? So the, the government gives you three main options on how you can retire on full benefits. All right. 30 years of service with minimum retirement age, which is usually between 55 and 57. That's the first option or the first way to retire. Then uh, your next option is 20 years of service at age 60. And then your final way to retire with full benefits is age 62 with five years of service. So Wes, that's likely going to be the situation that you're going to be in. So just make sure you have five years of service and you're over 62 and you can have full benefits. All righty, here we go. There was, um, I just had one and it bumped one second. It was, um, another one that I talked about the, um, nope, that's not it. Um, how early is too early to request the estimated annuity statement? I mean, if you're 15 years out, that might be a little early, but for sure in that, if you're in that, you know, around five-ish years out, um, definitely worth doing uh, to request that if you're, if you're within five years to get that annuity statement. Like we said, we can, when it starts to get longer projections, it's all going to be loose, educated guesses at that point. And we'd be happy to just run a pension estimate for you. Um, if it's further out than that uh, on a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So Latasha asks, do annuities make sense? And I like this question, Latasha, because it's one that's on the top of a lot of people's minds, especially as they get closer to retirement. And it depends. There's different types of annuities that do different reasons. When we discuss our, or when we um, uh, host our webinar on uh, the 13th next Thursday, that's one you're de gonna definitely wanna hear about because we're gonna go into detail about the number one annuity in the country and how it's different than most other annuities. So the, again, the answer is it depends. There's a specific annuity that is the number one conservative retirement account in the country, hands down. I mean, it's got over $120 billion transferred into these funds over the last two years alone. This thing is, is, is way better than any conservative option out there, but we don't have time to go into it. So request an appointment with us or join us next Thursday. All right, Justin, we're coming up on that uh, 10 minutes past the hour mark. So why don't we go ahead and uh, wrap this up for today? Are you yeah, okay with that? One, yeah, yeah, let's do one more each, and then okay. we'll, call it, we'll call it a day. Um, do you have one ready to go? or let, let me breeze through here and find okay. one real quick. Oh, so, uh, how do we, should we cancel Fegley? I have already found another LI company and been with them for a year. So you're just going to want to contact your HR agency and they're going to get you, uh, there's an in-service version of that Fegley continuation form. 
and you'll fill that out with what what parts of Fegly you want to continue to keep. You're probably going to want to keep your basic. Basic's got a pretty good option in retirement, and we'd be happy to do a call with you. Uh, this is Sarah that asks about this. But the thing about Fegly is you can reduce it almost at any time. You send in that form, and the very next pay period, it's going to drop off. But it almost takes an act of Congress to get more Fegley. So it's great that you already have another life insurance company. That's smart. But if you're someone that doesn't already have that in place, make sure you have your other coverage in place before you reduce or cancel your Fegley so you don't, don't end up kind of hanging out there in the wind without some actual coverage. So request from your HR uh, if they want you to do a paper form or online to do a, a change to your Fegley, turn that in and it'll drop off typically the next pay period. And I had two really good questions I couldn't decide on one. So I'm just going to answer both real quick. Okay. So Patty asked, will you go over the cost benefit differences between Medicare and staying with Fed health insurance? Um, yes and no. We're not going to go into the, to the nitty gritty differences of what your specific cost would be versus Medicare Advantage and let's say Medicare Part B. Uh, but during our um, seminar, our webinar next week, we will talk about maximizing things. We'll talk about FEHB in retirement and how to coincide that with Medicare. Okay, so that's a, a short answer there. So Medicare definitely plays a role um, and, and it's worth it um, most of the time. Now, John Conger says, um, how do you request an annuity statement? Is it the same thing as the estimated statement of personal benefits on Employee Express? So Employee Express, or you can go to the governmentretirementbenefits.gov, grb.gov, to get exactly that. The estimated annuity statement is also called the Statement of Personal Benefits. Okay, folks, so that's the first thing you want to do. And it's not a bad idea to do it, even though you're not retiring or you're not six months out, just to see that everything is correct. Because OPM does make mistakes. They're human, too. So if you can correct it sooner, then it's a little bit easier than having to go back. So. Well, I think I think uh, we were able to to answer quite a few questions here. I hope that everybody enjoyed their time. And like James has said, we can't get to everyone's questions. That's why we've got a whole team. There's about eight of us, 10 of us ready to talk to you. We're looking forward to it. We're going to answer all your questions, do a six part benefits analysis, project your pension, discuss Social Security, discuss Social Security maximization. maximization. That's something you definitely want to hear us talk about during a consultation, that, that's going to sort of open your mind a little bit. Uh, TSP maximization, we're going to cover Fegley, we're going to cover uh, survivor benefit annuity, FEHB and Medicare. So I'll, I'll let uh, James close us out, but thank you guys so much for your time. We really appreciate it, and we're looking forward to serving you sometime soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for spending some of your day with us. I know there's a ton of questions we didn't get to. Uh, please reach out to us, and we'd be happy to schedule that uh, that free consultation. I hope you all have a safe week uh, and look forward to seeing you on some of our future lunch and learns and maximization webinars. Take care. Thanks.